Finally, we complete the computation of our closed counterintegral. But pay attention, we use a modified integrand. That's a typical student's mistake. They often use the original integrand instead, which is wrong. So our integrand contains two simple poles inside the counter, and both of them are going to co contribute to our closed counterintegral. Those are the poles at points z equals minus 1 plus minus i. So let us compute the residue at point minus 1 plus i. It's a simple, meaning first order pole, and we use a short expression for this particular kind of poles. So the residue of f of z at simple pole is simply equal to the value of the nominator at this point, logarithm of squared, divided by the derivative of the denominator, which is 2z plus 2, which is nothing but log squared of minus 1 plus i divided by 2i. And we need to compute the value of our log function at point minus 1 plus i. We use the standard formula which you probably memorized by now. So what we do, we take a reference point somewhere on the upper bank of our branch cut, connect it with our point in question, and then trace the change of the argument of this z number. All right, so the standard formula is as follows. Log of minus 1 plus i equals the log of modulus of the ratios of these two complex numbers plus the log of x0 plus i0 and plus i delta argument of z. So to extract the delta argument, let's make a simple plot. And you obviously see that the number arrow rotates by 3 pi by 4. So our delta argument of z is simply 3 pi by 4. Now the logarithm of x0 and the logarithm of x0 plus i0 modulus obviously cancel. And the modulus of minus 1 plus i is simply square root of 2. So we obtained the value of our log at point minus 1 plus i, which is simply log of square root of 2 plus 3 pi i by 4. And now we obtained the residuum. In complete analogy, we compute the residue at point minus 1 minus i. The modulus of the complex number is the same. The only difference is the delta argument of z. Now, obviously, it adds pi by 2. So the change of the argument is going to be 5 pi by 4. And as a result, the residue of our function at point z equals minus 1 minus i is equal to logarithm of square root of 2 plus 5 pi i by 4 squared divided by 2i minus. Notice the flip of sign in front of the fraction. Well, I leave it up to you to figure out why it's there. And finally, we are ready to sum them up and get the expression of our closed contour integral. So they cancel out. 2i in the nominated denominator, so it's just pi times the difference of two full squares. So we'll just expand these two full squares and obtain the final answer. So obviously it's pi i is negative sign logarithm of square root of 2 and plus pi squared. And now we are ready. To write down the expression of our original integral because we equate this closed counter integral to the expression which was obtained earlier minus 4 pi i times our original integral plus the remainder term. So, equating now the imaginary parts of this left hand side and right hand side. We obtain our original integral, 
which is simply pi by 4 times the logarithm of square root of 2. And as a bonus, we obtained our remainder integral, which is simply pi by 4. So now we discuss the way to compute quite an unsuitable integral containing the log function. We conclude that if the integrand doesn't possess a particular symmetry, then the deformation of the contour is simply not enough, it doesn't do the job, and we need also to modify the integrand itself. And this is the end of our introduction into integrals containing multivalent functions. Think of it as a collection of tools that you need to polish and sharpen with constant exercises and practice, rather than the elixir. I hope you enjoyed the technique and you will find it useful in a future verb. So good luck with your home exercises.